Uh, the books that I found are The Nine Fruits of the Spirit. And you will have the opportunity to, if you would like a full set or however many you want, we paid a dollar for them. That's going to be your charge. There is no profit. It's just to recover the cost. What I like about these little books is when we get to each one of these fruits of the spirit, there are assignments and questions in each one of these books. Uh, one of the questions is, which I, I found so intriguing in your own life, how has lo true love been confused? How did you confuse love? And so th these books are scripture text. There's lessons in them. Uh, we will give out some of the questions. Like I said, it's going to be, I want interaction. I want you to ask questions. I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, give me some feedback. Let's answer these uh, because we're on a road to spiritual growth and we can't afford to leave anybody behind. So let us get over to the acts of sinful nature. No passage in the Bible draws a clearer contrast between the lifestyle of the spirit-filled believer and that of the person controlled by sinful human nature than Galatians 5th chapter 16 through the 26th verse. Paul not only discusses general lifestyle differences by emphasizing that the spirit and the sinful nature are at war with each other, but he also includes a specific list of both the acts of sinful nature and the fruit of the Spirit. Now, before we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, we were without covering. We operated in the lust of the flesh. And I know that when we mention lust of the flesh, a lot of people automatically think you're talking about the sexual nature. But anything that you indulge in, in your flesh, in carnality, is lust of the flesh. So it's much more than being promiscuous. It's much more than that. It's anything that is not pleasing unto the will of God that we indulge in. And that's something we don't want to do. We don't want to indulge in it. And one thing that we're going to go over is just because we came over on the Lord's side, it doesn't mean that we don't fight against these things. We yet fight against those things. But we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that strengthens us to fight against those things. The acts of sinful nature being in the flesh or to be carnally minded are terms for the sinful human nature with its corrupt desires. The sinful nature remains within Christians after their conversion and is their deadly enemy. So imagine that. Your former life, how you operated and moved about, is an enemy to where you are now. So if you have your Bibles, let's go over to Romans the eighth chapter. And I'm going to start at the first verse. In this first portion, we are covering the acts of sinful nature. Romans 8 and 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What does that mean? 
that that means that I must mind the things of the spirit and not of my fleshly nature. I can't think carnally. I must think spiritually. And when I think spiritually, those carnal things of my mind and of my flesh, they will die. I won't practice to do the things in my flesh because I did those things before I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And let me say this, the day that you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, we have to grow into spiritual maturity and grow unto that strength. That's why we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, to help guide us and to strengthen us, to remind us of the word, to convict us. Is what I'm doing, will it please God? Will it dishonor God? So the Holy Spirit, which the fruit of the Spirit, that's what he gives us. These are characteristics of the Holy Spirit. If our Lord and Savior, if our Messiah needed to walk, because he demonstrated, he walked, he lived within these fruits of the Spirit. He is the Word. He is the Son of God. If he needed it, we do too. We, we, we need it beyond. We need it more because he was the word. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. To break that down a little further, if you, if you like to argue, that's a fleshly thing. What are you arguing about? You mind the things of the flesh. You're going to look for an argument. You want an argument. You don't like peace. You pursue things that's going to inject the argument as things of the flesh. If you are pumped up with pride, that's your motive. Everything, you go, everything that you do has to do with your pride. It has nothing to do with pleasing God. If you like people praise, guess what? You're not worried about doing anything for God. Only thing you're worrying about is who's going to like what you did. Did they like what you uh, had to say for somebody to run and, and pat you on the back and say, oh, you did a good job. If that's what you're looking for, that's all you're going to get. But that's carnality. That's that flesh. We want to please man rather than God. They that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. And so I want to be... Uh, spiritually filled hunger and thirst after the knowledge of Christ I mind the things of the spirit will this please God or is it pleasing me or is it pleasing man will God get the glory or am I looking for the glory am I pleasing this flesh the lust of the flesh wants to please the flesh and when you want to please the, the, the flesh, guess what? You're really not worried about pleasing the next man. Only as long as you're satisfied. As long as you're good. That means I can literally step on your foot and the pleasure of you saying ouch with an attitude. That's pleasing the flesh. I know I see your foot. I know I have enough room to walk around. But I ain't going to do that. I'm going to walk just as close to your foot and step on it and then walk all the way around. Yeah, you're saying, ouch. But I won't say anything. Because it pleased me to see you in pain. You have some that like to invoke pain. Invoke somebody out of their peaceful state. You know, you can see somebody... And they're just at peace in their mind in their own business. Like they say, misery loves company. Mm -hmm. And you have nothing else to do. This is lust of the flesh. They ain't bothering you. They minding their own business. But you don't like that. Because you like to stir up trouble. So what you going to do? You going to go over there and stir up a little something. Oh, you know they were talking about you? You know, they were looking at you this way and that way. And then you'll leave. Once the, ag the spirit of agitation has been set, spirit of agitation has been set in place. It is stirred up and working. Guess what you'll do? You'll walk away. 
That was your motive. The lust of the flesh. To stir up. To cause havoc. You know, you might not mean a person any good. But you'll go to make them think. You mean them some good. And I'm talking about the relationship side. You know good well you don't want that person. Quit playing with them. Leave them alone. You don't want them. Come on. You don't want them. You know that they want you, but you really don't want them. So every now and then, you're going to throw them a bone. Mm -hmm. And then you're going on about your business. Lust of the flesh. But we're spiritually minded. And so everything that we do, we must consult the Holy Spirit. He is a guide. He gives directions. He gives counsel. He reveals truth. He shows us. And so I must consult him in everything that I do. Spiritually minded. Verse 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so as long as I walk in my carnality, I am spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. I can't get a prayer through. Guess what? I'm not even thinking about praying. The soul might hit your mind, but it won't come out of your mouth. Spiritually dead. We Spiritually dead is not even thinking about reading the word. It's not even thinking about fellowshipping amongst your brother and sisters for strength. Spiritually dead is living in the flesh. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh, guess what? You cannot please God in the flesh. Can't please God in the flesh. And so everything that we do, we must do it pleasing unto God and not unto man. Once again, don't look for somebody to come pat you on the back. Oh, you did such a good job. Or carnality will go and ask somebody, how did I do why are you worrying about what they think? Did you speak what the Holy Spirit told you to speak? Did you sing the way he told you to sing? Did you do according to the will of God? But when we want to please this old flesh, you will literally ask someone, how did I do? Because you're looking for people approval, people praise, rather than releasing what we are directed to release. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Isn't that something? We don't belong to him if his spirit doesn't dwell in us. We can act. But that's a, that's a wonderful thing about God. And we'll, we'll look at that when we take a look at love how much he loved us, that he dwells in us. And that he gave his son for us because he didn't want sin to interfere with our opportunity for eternal life. And if Christ being you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So now examine where you are. We're limited on time tonight because we started a little late and I want to make sure everybody is out of here on time. 
Examine where you are. Am I walking in my flesh or am I doing things of the spirit? Those who practice the, practice the acts of the sinful nature cannot inherit God's kingdom. So there's two things. I'm none of his and I can't inherit his kingdom. I operate in sinful acts. So guess what? If I can't, if I'm none of his and I can't inherit his kingdom, guess where I'm going to spend eternity? In the lake of fire. Therefore, this sinful nature must be resisted and put to death continually through the power of the Holy Spirit. The acts of sinful nature as found in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. So if you have your Bible... Let's go over to Galatians 5, beginning at the 19th verse. And I'm going to tell you that it's a little touchy. We're going to look at each and every one of these. These are also known as the works of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, adultery. So next to adultery, you got your scripture text, Galatians 5.19. Let's talk about adultery because adultery is not just when you commit the act of having intercourse or intimacy with someone outside your marriage. It starts with those cute little compliments that are out of place and they are in your mind and they begin to grow and you're having conversations about personal things with somebody other than your spouse. It starts there and it begins to grow. And that's how a relationship is developed through conversations. That's intimacy. Sharing private and personal things that only you really should be discussing with your spouse. And it festers. And what you didn't do for your spouse, you begin to do so that you can gain the attention for someone outside of the home. Now, if you're not fixing yourself up and keeping yourself together for your spouse, just cause Jim at the office smiled at you and all of a sudden where you did not wear Bath and Body Works and Victoria's Secret and all these cute colognes and now you're going to get your hair done and your nails done, you think your spouse is not noticing because they don't say anything, but they see that change in you. Because somebody gave you a compliment or through conversation, they found out your weak areas. One of those weak areas could be my husband, my wife don't pay attention to me. I'm telling you how it works, how it starts. They don't compliment me. Guess what you just did? You just gave the enemy tools on how to entice you and pull you in. And before you know it, you get complimented, you get breakfast, you get coffee, you get flowers, you get midday texts, midday calls, you get lunch, you get all of these things. And all you had to do was tell Mr. at home, I'm feeling neglected, or Mrs. at home, what you need. But through that conversation, you gave him tools on how to snag you. And then you caught up, and then you don't know how it happened. Or, we never went to bed together, but you had intimacy. 
outside of the marriage with someone else. That's adultery. The very thought of it. It's in other things. When you take in pleasures, intimate pleasures outside of your spouse, it's adultery. Mm -hmm. It's more than just going to bed with somebody. When it becomes intimate and it's outside of the spouse, it's adultery. Fornication. If you are not married and you are sleeping with someone, it is fornication. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. Now, if you happen to be in that position, before you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repent, get it right. Lord, is this my spouse? Get married. Do not think that you have peace with God. And let me tell you something, when we get to peace, I know it says pursue peace with all men, but I need to make sure I have peace with God. I want peace with him. The thing about it is, before I came into the knowledge of it, I didn't see anything wrong. But now that it's been revealed and I'm being taught the truth, I have to correct it. If you need strength in that area, Holy Spirit, I need strength. Lead and guide me. Uncleanliness and lasciviousness, sensuality, following one's passions and desires to the point of having no shame or public decency. You just don't care what you do and who see it and, and what they think. You just going to do it. You just going to do it. You don't care that your body is revealed and you're out. Because this my body and I'm grown. And I'm proud of what I got. Not when you're confessing that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. You're defiling the temple. You're actually inviting spirits. You're inviting all kinds of compliments. And then when somebody say something to us out of line, well, look at the way we're dressed. I'm a firm believer that they can call you what they want to call you, but what are you answering to? And the answer could be in the way that you present yourself. But then there's no decency. You just gonna do it. Idolatry. Worship of spirits, persons or graven images, trust in any person, institution or thing as having equal or greater authority than God and his word. Let me back up and give you guys some scriptures. For fornication, Acts, 15th chapter, 20th verse, and the 29th verse. Also, Ephesians, the fifth chapter and the third verse. And this is for fornication. For uncleanliness, Second Corinthians twelve twenty one. Idolatry. Worship of spirits, persons, or graven images, trust in any person, 
institution or anything as having equal or greater authority than God and his word. Uh, reference scripture, Colossians 3 and 5. Let's tap into this persons or graven images. It could be our jobs. It could be our children. It could be materialistic things. We can actually put our leaders, the men and women of God, on such a high standard and, and pedestal that we look to them before we look to God. And we can put them before God. Before we consult God, before we can consult the Holy Spirit, we'll consult our leaders. Well, guess what they have to do before they give you an answer? They got to go in prayer. They got to get an answer. They got to go before God. Why can't we? Yes, they are given as shepherds, but they're not above our Lord and Savior. And sometimes we can praise and glorify them more than we praise and glorify God. It happens. We can worship things. We can worship our vehicles. We can worship our homes put so much emphasis in that that we neglect our time with God and that's what that means that idolatry everything else has such importance than your time in the word oh I gotta run over here and I gotta run over there once again works will not get you into heaven it's our obedience and faithfulness we have to get our priorities in order Worshiping spirits. That goes back to that. This is a big lust of the flesh. That carnality. <laughs> now the truth of the matter is that carnality is. If you sitting around wishing. I'm just going to call it out. Because we're going to get to witchcraft. If you sitting around wishing harm and hurt to somebody. That's idolatry. You call it on spirits. To hurt and harm somebody. <laughs> That's also a form of witchcraft. We don't operate in that. Witchcraft is our next one. Reference scriptures are Exodus 7 and 11, 7 chapter 11th verse. Also the 22nd verse, Exodus 8th chapter and the 18th verse, Revelations 9th chapter, 21st verse, witchcraft, sorcery, spiritism, black magic, worship of demons, and use of drugs to produce spiritual experiences. Imagine that. That after you have smoked and drank or did whatever usage, all of a sudden, God talking to you. No. Mm -mm. No. He doesn't operate that way. Another form of witchcraft is discord. It's division. Anytime individual talks against the will of God, the man and woman of God over a house, your shepherds, that is a form of witchcraft. Because you're talking against the will of God and anything against the will of God, it will not stand. And so we have to be so very, very careful what we allow to stir in this process up here and what comes out of our mouths, what we allow to fester in our hearts. If we do not understand a thing, the best thing for us to do is to pray about it. 
Lord, I don't understand. The best thing to do is to pray for your leaders. Pray that they stay focused on the vision that God gave them for that particular house. Pray that they have and keep the spirit of discernment. That they do not override the spirit of discernment. That they can see spiritually, hear spiritually, and sense spiritually. But to talk against is a form of witchcraft. And in that day that we go stand before him for every thought and word, we will have to give an account. And that's for all of us. We don't understand everything. We're not going to agree on everything. But the thing to do is, is to pray. Lord, you know, and I don't. You know what's further ahead. Uh, I think it should go this way. But remember this above all and anything. My ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So I could be thinking one thing, but you see what's far ahead. And you have all things in control. You know the purpose and the plans. And so guess what? That's why when something hits my mind and I know it ain't none of my business, guess what I tell myself? Girl, that ain't none of your business. Mind your business. I don't have nothing to do with you. Mind your business. I push those thoughts out. But if we don't know this, we'll operate in this and it could cause us damnation. So we have to be so careful with what we think and what we say. When we are given instructions, we might not agree, but we got to bite the bullet. Guess what? I bite the bullet every day. One thing I had to learn and what God called me to do, he called me to be one that goes out to repair and restore in ministries. Well, I struggled with something and I'm, I'm very transparent. I struggled with this, that once I gave you uh, the, what the Holy Spirit gave me, I wanted to see you at work. I wanted to see, see it come to pass. And so I was very impatient with people. I really was because I wanted to know what your problem was. You say your vision is that you want to start um, this and start that. And I've given you the tools. What you waiting on? And so I was so impatient with that. I was so impatient with people. And, and I was frustrated. And one day I was sitting on the edge of my bed. And the Holy Spirit said, your job is to deliver and to plant. That's it. And I wrote that note on the back of a card. And when I accepted that. That frustration left me. I was no longer frustrated. As long as I was obedient to the will of God, that mumbling and grumbling that I was doing, uh, what's wrong with them? They ain't got it yet. And, and saying all of these things, guess what? That was a form of witchcraft. I was talking against because they were moving too slow. See, I can talk about me in transparency. But the Holy Spirit corrected me. He chastised me. So now I need to make sure what it is that you want me to give. Even though you might ask me for something. If the Holy Spirit didn't tell me to release that to you, guess what? I'm not releasing it. That ain't my job with you. What am I supposed to deliver and when? And once I release it, I'm done. I've done my job. I can say my assignment is complete on that. Now, Lord, what else? But he had to correct me because I had an attitude. I really did. I had an attitude. He said that wasn't your job. Your job was to deliver. That was it. That's all you were supposed to do. He said, one plant, one water, he'll give the increase. And so guess what? Then I learned that I had to pray for the one who was coming in back of me. Once I deliver, I need to move on to pray for the fulfillment of the vision. 
There I was. I, I, I was giving myself a migraine. I had my blood pressure was up because I had an attitude. Let me tell you something. And didn't mind telling you I did. <laughs> I thought I was right. But he chastises whom he loves. And he loves us. I'm going to stop right there because I want to open up our questions and answers section and to get some feedback from what we've gone through from adultery to witchcraft. How many of those things are new to some of us? Some things. Today actually help understand a lot more. So. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. Some of the things are new. Some of them are a refresher. I can say that. This study is a refresher. It's a reminder. It's a self-check. That you know what? Let me look at these things and see where I have fallen into these crevices and these cracks. To get myself in order. It wasn't a, a lesson to correct somebody else because I'm the first partaker. And if we're not willing to be the first partaker, what are we doing? That's another form of idolatry and witchcraft. That means I'm putting myself above. <laughs> I'm putting myself above and I'm not. I'm learning and growing just like you. As long as we have breath in our bodies, we're all growing. No one has made it. No one. So this is what I'm going to do. We're going to cut off right here at Witchcraft. But I, what I want you to do is I for, for our next meeting next Wednesday, for what you have left, I want you to have your, I want you to find a scripture text. I want you to find a scripture text. If I give everything, then what? What you're actually doing? This is interaction. This is we're taking a, a, another route to Bible study. This is what Bible study is really all about. To take the time to dig into stuff and to ask those questions. And if you have any questions, uh, bring them back, and we can open up with answering the questions. But I definitely want you all to look at number 6 through 15. Get your scripture text. Have that ready. I hear you, Deke. Thank you, thank you Deacon Thomas. 6 through 15, well then, um, That's just it. 6 through 15, I want you... Mm -hmm. On the paper wise, I want you. Like, yeah. You know, if you have some questions, no, and just a quick, just a quick question. Like, a, I don't know, you know, you, you, you can read that throughout the Bible, you know, like I read it in um, Acts, mm -hmm. you know, like how it's worship. It's something like we read, we jot it down, you talk about that. Yes. Right. Yes. So just give me a, a, a reference scripture on those things. Yes. Um, from hatred to, to, to revelings. Mm -hmm. Yes. So give me that. And then when we get to these books, there are such questions. Here, here's something that's in here that I absolutely love. Think of one person into which you need to pour some of this agape love into. Think about that. Hey. 
That's right, because whether they realize it or not, you're the blessing there. You're the blessing. Once again, there are nine books to these, to this series. You can get all nine. We're not making a profit. We paid a dollar. You pay a dollar, you can get the, the whole set. Or if you just want one or two, but it's going to cover each one of the fruit of the spirit. We're going to go through each one of these through scripture text. Uh, we're going to kick off once we finish next week, then we're going to start with the um, fruit of the spirit of love. And we're going to dig into that. Now, and, and let me just go ahead and tell you all, if uh, you go into any of the um, 